another Mysteries Musical Minutes. I'm excited for this particular episode because we're going to travel in this episode. So, so far we know about building a piece of music, starting with the staff lines and the clefs, so that we know what notes or what pitches we're going to be using. We also know about dividing those long staff lines into smaller sections called measures or bars. And now we need to get some notes on that page. And there are a ton of different kinds of notes. And when we put the notes together, that is the rhythm of the piece. So I think we better go upstairs and pack for our trip. Okay, well, got my business trip to Mexico coming up. Building a concerto. I gotta see what to pack. Well, I need some fun pants, that's for sure. I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a fun shirt to wear in Mexico. That, that looks like a Mexico shirt, yeah. Okay. And <laughs> some fun hair ties, because who doesn't need those? All right, oh, something fun to wear around my neck. Oh, and earrings. Should be these, or these, maybe these. Ha, might as well take all three. We might need them. And I'm gonna need some uh, instruments. Gonna need some maracas. Maybe some other kind of maracas. Yeah. Oh, I know. I need this weiro. Oh yeah. And um, well, oh, gosh, but I need my sombrero. I don't think that's gonna fit. Well, I'll just have to wear it. And then I'm gonna need a lot of note heads, solid note heads. I'm gonna need those. I'm gonna need some open note heads. Oh, there's more solid note heads. I can't have enough of those. Oh, we're gonna need a ton of, of stems. That's for sure. And if we're gonna go a little bit faster and more <laughs> spicy, we're gonna need some, some beans and some some double beams and oh if we break those guys apart we're gonna we're gonna need a whole bag of flags so I think that's it I think we're good to go Oy! so for our trip to Mexico we started by packing note heads and that's the ball of the note some notes like we saw maybe just have an open circle and that's it, that's called a whole note. Then we have an open kind of circle that has a long stick to it called a stem. And then some are filled in like these. So if I look at my notes right here, I have the note heads, then I have this long line called the stem. If we have notes that are much shorter in length, they have a connecting section called a beam. If it's just one beam, it would be eighth notes. No matter how many you put together, as long as there's just one beam, they're eighth notes. If you have two beams together, then you have sixteenth notes. If you were to take these two notes and break them apart, you would end up with this kind of thing on your stem, which is called a flag. Now. This allows us to see where we are placing these notes on those staff lines. The note head location is what tells us which note to play. So your note head is either going to be located in a space or it's going to be located on a line. And that tells us which pitch to play. When we talk about different rhythms, we have to have different kinds of notes and different lengths of duration. This is where music turns into a lot of math because we're constantly dividing that measure of beats into smaller amounts and trying to fit everything inside those, those beats that are located in that measure. So if we start at the top and create a pyramid, we start with that open note that's called a whole note and it has four beats to it. It would sound like this. And that's four beats 
all together. If we split this apart, let's say we're using a 4-4 time signature, so four beats in a measure, this whole note would take up the entire measure. Once that whole note's over, boom, there's a bar line. We can't put any more in that measure because it takes up four beats. If we split this whole note in half and we make two, what are they called? You can guess, half notes, that's right. This half note has an open circle with a stem on it. That's what makes it different from the whole note is we have that stem. Each one is two beats. Then we have another way that we could break them apart. We could take these half notes, break them apart, and then we have notes that are called quarter notes. See where we're going? Whole, half, quarter. Mm -hmm. So we have quarter notes. These have the note heads that are filled in. They also have a stem going up. Now, each of these is one beat. So four of them would fill up a 4-4 four, four bar. And that's what that would sound like. I could break them apart again and create, instead of quarter notes, eighth notes. So we have the note head, the stem, the beam that connects them. And remember what I said? You can have as many eighth notes connected as you want with that beam. As long as there's one beam, it's still eighth notes. So this line of notes would sound like this. And then, if we want to get even crazier, we could split these apart as well. We would make four groupings of four sixteenth notes. And these are the notes that have the two beams connecting them. That's how we know that they are sixteenth notes. They would sound like this. And that's some of the divisions that we have. We can also split apart our notes in different combinations, such as if we take these two eighth notes and only split apart one of the eighth notes and make it sixteenths, we could have this rhythm, an eighth note and two sixteenths. It sounds like this. Then we could have split apart just the first eighth note and leave the second eighth note whole. There's also a way that we can have just an eighth note and then every note has an equivalent rest symbol. That means we're going to be quiet. So instead of sounding like this, it's going to be so we have that space in there that's silent. I also wanted to show you that while all of my stems are going up, maybe you've seen in music how stems also can point down. So this is what it looks like if your stem is pointing down. And the way that's determined is where it ends up on those staff lines. If the note head is lower, the stem goes up. If the note head is higher on the lines, the stem goes down. We also have a division where we could have three even notes. Now, this has one beam, so these are like eighth notes, but instead of having two in a beat, we're gonna squeeze three in a beat. And that's called a triplet. And if you've been in school for music, you'll know that you're supposed to pronounce that triplet, triplet, triplet. Yes, then the word triplet only has two syllables. But for some reason in music, we make sure it has three beat, three syllables so that we can have a space for all three of those notes. Now, the normal way that we are taught to count these rhythms is with numbers. And again, this is where our math comes in. We have partial numbers, we have parts of parts of a beat. So normally, we would, if it, this was a 4-4 time signature, we would count this one. If we have eighth notes, we would use the word and, two, and. If we have sixteenth notes, we would use the number, e and a, uh, three e and a, uh, and then back to just a one beat quarter note, which is a four. This rhythm would sound like this. One, two, and, three e and a, uh, four. On the piccolo, it sounds like this. Now, I did 
discovered that while I was being a band director, I had to teach lots of students how to count rhythms. And there were as many students as there were, there were tons of students that just could not get a grasp on how to use the numbers. The numbers didn't make sense to them. It didn't turn into a rhythm in their head. And so I came up with a system of using some other words to use to, to explain the rhythm and what it sounds like. Because when we speak, our words have rhythms to them. And so we turn those words into written notes. And you know what? A lot of those students caught on a lot better. And what I used for the students was a group of fruits and vegetables because I knew they were familiar with those. So I used the word grape for the quarter note, orange for the two eighth notes, rutabaga for the four sixteenth notes, and back to a quarter note, grape. So this rhythm would sound like this, grape, orange, rutabaga, grape. Or again on my piccolo, So that turned into rhythms that they could read. Now, I thought maybe instead of fruits and vegetables, since we're taking our trip to Mexico, maybe we could just spice things up a little bit and use some Mexican food. Ah, yeah, 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 we made it to Mexico, so excited. Now we can have some fun with our rhythms and figure out what are these rhythms like with Mexican food. So if we start at the top, we have a quarter note and we're gonna say chips. We're gonna say chips. Are you one of those people who gets the chips first with the queso and you eat so much of that you don't even want your food? When it comes, yeah, that's me all over the place. Then we have two eighth notes, which we're gonna say taco, taco. So this rhythm would be chips, taco. Now we can also have two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. That rhythm is gonna be played on this instrument. This instrument's called a huiro. It's spelled G-U-I-R-O, but it's called a huiro. So I think this is the best way to demonstrate the rhythm of two sixteenths and an eighth, and that's gonna be nacho cheese, nacho cheese, nacho cheese, nacho cheese. Then we're gonna flip that around, and we're gonna have an eighth note first with two sixteenth notes. That's gonna be hot salsa, hot salsa, hot salsa. Then we have the triplet fajita, fajita, fajita. And then we're gonna spice things up a bit and we're gonna have four sixteenth notes and the rhythm for that is gonna be margarita, margarita. If for any reason you don't wanna say margarita cause you don't drink alcohol, you can go with guacamole, guacamole. And that works just as well. So let's try to read a rhythm. This top line right here is gonna be read like this. Chips, taco, margarita, chips. Chips, taco, margarita, chips. Does that make sense? That's how we figure out what rhythm it is. Let's try the bottom line. It's a little more complicated. I'll review with you that the notes are two sixteenths and an eighth. That's nacho cheese. Then we have an eighth and two sixteenths. That's hot salsa. So you start by saying nacho cheese hot salsa. See how your rhythm is already in your words? And then we have fajita chips, fajita chips. So then we're gonna go nacho cheese hot salsa fajita chips. Let's do that together. Here we go now. Nacho cheese hot salsa fajita chips. How'd you do? That is how we read rhythms. Pretty spicy, isn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hey. Now, when we see rhythms on the page, 
If you're a percussionist playing an instrument that doesn't change the pitch or the note, such as instruments like the snare drum, the cymbals, the bass drum, they have one pitch to them. And so you would just see that rhythm in a long line, just like this, or just like this. Sometimes the rhythm might be a little more complicated than that. So now, if we're an instrument that changes pitches, such as, well, all the instruments in the orchestra except for those percussion ones, then you will find that we're moving, we're, we're pulling those notes in different pitches, but we're keeping that rhythm the same. Let me show you. This rhythm right here, we've heard before. So we heard that rhythm before when we were just learning what different kinds of notes are. Now if we take these same, the same rhythm and we put it on different pitches, then maybe it sounds like this. And that's how our music starts to take shape. We put together the different pitches of the notes, we pull out different rhythms and combinations that are fun, and we start building our piece of music. Well, I hope you had fun Lear Oh, excuse me. Hold on. Well, I hope you had so much fun learning how to read rhythms by using Mexican menu items. I thought that was a cool way to learn them. And remember, all of our words have certain rhythms that just go with them naturally. So if you find a neat rhythm, see if you can add some words to it. I also want to take a moment to tell you that one of the things that we teach our students, and maybe this is something that will help you in the future, is that you use a different side of your brain to remember things without music or rhythm than you do remembering things with rhythm and music. So if you're the type of person that needs to find ways of remembering certain things, try putting it to a rhythm or to music. I can tell you that in my experience, the part of my brain that remembers things without music and without rhythm is terribly weak. Terribly weak. It's like Teflon. Slides right off. But the part of my brain that remembers things that are set to music or set to rhythm is strong, strong like a bull. And I can remember things from my childhood because they were set to a song. Do you remember that song, The 50 Nifty United States? Well, it lists the 50 states in alphabetical order. I can tell them to you right now. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, Wyoming. I learned that in fifth grade. And I'm like, way older than that now. We won't get into how old. But suffice to say, I learned that in fifth grade. And that stuck with me because it was set to music. I know I learned the presidents in order. Don't ask me about them, because we didn't set it to a song. So I just wanted to let you know that as we get older, maybe we need some extra tips on how to remember things a little bit better. So if you can, set things to music. Instead of head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, maybe it's wallet, cell phone, glasses, keys, glasses, keys. Maybe that's the kind of song we need to sing now. Tune in next time and we'll keep building that piece of music.